What is up, guys? Welcome back for week three of the NPL. This week we are taking on Regulator 60, Greg and his uh, Los Angeles Clefable. You guys can see his team up on the right. I'm going to go through it really quickly. So he's got Lan OT, which is one of his Zemons, Megazard X, Scizor, Rotom Wash, Scolipede, Celebi, and Gardevoir, the Psychic Core. Stack Attack, which is a massive threat to my team, uh, if you guys look at my team up top. Got an Alolan Raticate with a Z-Move, and uh, as well as Toxicroak uh, on there, which is a great water check for him, honestly. Uh, but yeah, that's um, that's his team. Uh, like I said, Stack Attack, a huge, huge threat. Uh, the Scizor is something I have to watch out for. Megazard X, uh, definitely something I want to check, at least on my team. Land OT. Uh, is going to be a problem if it gets up a rock polish because uh, it is one of his Zemons. And then his dual psychic core is so, so threatening. Uh, Rotom Wash can really pivot on my team uh, super well. Uh, and then a little eradicated and Toxic Croak, I don't really expect to come. Scallopede could definitely be, be a bring, but uh, if it comes, it comes more so uh, as a spike stacker, I think, uh, against my team. Uh, but looking at this matchup, the first one that I decided to bring was uh, Sneasel, Baby Chimp. Uh, we got Foul Play, Knock Off, Ice Shard in Pursuit with a Choice Scarf. So this this is essentially to check all of his Choice Scarfers. I'm faster than Scarf Celebi, faster than Scarf Lando, uh, plus one Zard X, uh, Scarf Scizor if it locks itself into uh, into anything really other than Bullet Punch, uh, Scarf Guard, I outspeed all of them. Uh, Foul Play is really, really strong against his team because his... Um, his physical attackers are super powerful. Um, his Lando T, Zardex, and Scizor uh, all float around like the base 130 to base 145 uh, attack range. So that's uh, that's incredible for me. I can just like destroy his team with foul play. Uh, knockoff is to get rid of like clutch items. Uh, for example, uh, Scizor if it's carrying uh, leftovers. The same thing with Rotom Wash. Uh, Celebes, uh, for example, a Cobra Berry, get rid of it. And that, that opens up uh, foul play uh, for later in the game. So uh, stack attack if it's got a Shuka Berry, for example. There's a lot of things that knockoff's really good for. Ice Shard is uh, just an amazing revenging tool for his uh, Lando as well as his Celebi if they're uh, if they're both decently no low enough. And then Pursuit is going to be really nice in, in case his Gardevoir is Choice Scarfed. Uh, if it locks itself into a Psychic move, for example, I can come into Sneasel and then Pursuit it and then get rid of it immediately. Uh, so that's uh, that's really, really nice for me. As, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much, there's not much to say about Sneasel. Let's move on to, uh, the next mon on our team. C Major, the Como, uh, we got Clang Scales, Focus Blast, Poison Job, and Atotomize. I'm running an Atotomize set this, uh, this week with a Life Orb, uh, Bulletproof, and, uh, we got 252 Special Attack with, uh, m Mild Nature, uh, Minus Defense. Just to make sure that uh, I'm not dropping my spit F because I need to take a hit from Celebi uh, if necessary. Uh, as well as Clanging Scales should in theory drop my defense, but because Battle Area has a, a little glitch on it, I only found this out after the game, uh, then you never get the defense drop uh, as a result. Uh, so that's uh, that's going to affect the game slightly, you guys are going to see. Uh, Focus Blast, Poison Jab. Uh, Poison Jab is there for the Celebi as well as the Gardevoir, mainly the Gardevoir. I can kill it uh, with this attack investment after rocks if it's only slightly HP invested, like 16 HP. I knock it out. Uh, and then Focus Blast is there for the Stack Attacka, uh, the, uh, the Raticate, as well as the Scizor. Uh, I can hit all of them very, very hard with this move. And uh, Totemize makes sure that uh, my speed is is there uh, to make sure that I'm outspeeding Scarf Selby, uh, speed creeping my base 95s. Uh, so 318 times 1.5, essentially. Uh, so things like um, Silvali and um and yuxi for example like those i don't know why he would speed creep those with a scarf necessarily but i'm covering it just in case so that's uh that's como uh you guys are gonna see a very interesting thing that happens with this thing during the game uh we're gonna go on to uh to mega aerodactyl next up we got stone edge fire fang ice fang and roost uh fire and ice coverage comes back up again later uh in the team builder uh we're running a very physically defensive set i've only got enough attack to basically to it ko alano on the switch uh with uh, stone edge into ice fang even if he intimidate drops me uh if he's an offensive lando uh the speed on there is enough for scolipede and the uh the defense is to be able to take hits from like unboosted scissor uh the bullet punch um lando's uh stone edge for example uh zardex is anything really i can take any attack from that thing if rocks aren't up I could, i'm pretty sure i can even take a plus one dragon claw very very well uh and then obviously i'm a decent check to his uh radicate his toxic croak uh, Toxic Grove, because I had, do have Fire Fang, of course. Uh, dry Skin makes Fire Fang super effective. And then uh, Celebi uh, and Gardevoir don't really like taking hits from this thing in the first place. So, Stack Attack being the only real check, I did consider bringing Earthquake on this, but I felt like uh, I had 
good enough switch-ins uh, to where I wouldn't need Earthquake, and either way, Greg was likely to run an Air Balloon or Shook a Berry, uh, so I didn't want to I didn't want to chance that and lose my Aerodact Aerodactyl that turn as a result. Moving on, we do have Knowledge coming for the first time. Yuxi, Foul Play, Stealth Rocks, U-Turn, and Toxic. I explained Foul Play earlier. It's already really good against this team, so I decided to pack it on as my offensive move. U-Turn is going to be nice. Nice for momentum. Uh, Stealth Rocks and Toxic. So I do have enough speed on here for the Scizor. Max speed Scizor. So I get to find out if it's Scarfed, if it does get uh, initiative on me. And you turns out first. Uh, we got uh, 152 defense with a... Uh, with an impish nature, make sure that I can take hits from uh, from his Zardex, his Lando, all of those things. And uh, a lot of HP, of course, max uh, with leftovers, so pretty straightforward. Uh, Levitate is nice as it, uh, it gets me off the ground against things like um, Earthquaking Stack Attack or Earthquaking Zardex, anything like that. I don't think he's going to run Earthquake on anything against me, but like Lando T. I can definitely switch in on Lando uh, for sure. And um, so long as he's not plus two Sky Strike, then I'm pretty much good to go. I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, I can take any hit from that thing, including knockoff. So that's Uxie Knowledge uh, back with us uh, for this season in the NPL. Last time I used Uxie was in the GPC in season five, I believe. Uh, and uh, that's that's a very, very long time ago, but it did a lot of work for me. So I'm hoping it does the same now. Next up, we got probably the most useful one on the team, which is... Uh, I, I always want to say Arceus because of the way that I nicknamed this thing, but Silvali Steel, Arceus 50% coming this week with Ice Beam, Flamethrower, Thunder Wave, and Parting Shot. Like I said, uh, Ice plus Fire on, against this team is really nice because it covers the Lando plus the Scizor. Thunder Wave pretty much covers everything else, uh, and then Parting Shot is, is amazing against him uh, every time that he has to switch on me. It's really nice. The special attack investment on there is to be able to Oko Lando T uh, from after rocks, I believe, even if he's a defensive variant with Ice Beam. The speed is enough for both Adamant Lando T and Jolly Lando T speed creeping my Diggersby, which I expect his Zard X to do the same because it doesn't need more speed than that against me, I feel. Uh, so I think that this is enough to cover those speeds. And uh, then we got the uh, 16 speed F. This is for the Gardevoir mainly. Uh, this is a really good switch into Gardevoir if he doesn't focus blast. Like, I can take hits like nothing and then just uh, Thunder Wave or Parting Shot out. I'm hoping that he brings Scarf Guard uh, against me because then this this is a great check to it. So that's uh, that's Silvali Steel. And finally, we have Tapu Koko with a Ferium Z, Dazzling Gleam, Taunt, Nature's Madness, and Roost. It's pretty much just the support set. Uh, this keeps him from being able to go for Trick Room, which he has multiple setters on his team, including Celebi, Gardevoir, and Stack Attack. Uh, those three specifically... Uh, the biggest threat to set up Trick Room against me, and Trick Room is a very valid tool against me uh, because of all the speed that I have in my uh, in my breakers and my momentum mons. So that's uh, that's something that I expect him to do. I'm not sure why I ran 328 speed uh, and why I decided to speed die Zardex and uh, as well as uh, Celebi. But uh, either way, I don't feel like he'll run max speed on either of those, so I don't think it really matters. Uh, I am covering the the Lando speed, all of that. Uh, so, again, I can't remember why it's 328, uh, but the, uh, the HP investment is to be able to better take things like, uh, Staka's Gyro Ball once it's a minus one from a parting shot, uh, things like Celebi's Psychic, Scizor's Bullet Punch, all of those things, uh, and then the special attack is there to be able to Oko, uh, well, not Oko, but 2-hit KO the Megazard X with, uh, a Dazzling Gleam into a, uh, Twinkle Tackle, same thing with Lando T, so... Pretty straightforward, uh, and Nature's Madness was just to be able to get off half damage on things like uh, Staka, Celebi, uh, Celebi mainly, because that would be his main switch into uh, to Coco if anything, uh, as well as Guard, so uh, yeah, all of those things. Be definitely weaken down his Psychic Core is what I wanted to do with this team, so uh, that's uh, pretty much the team builder, guys. We'll hop right into the game. Uh, I'm going to bring it up here. Uh, reset it because I actually had to, uh, thank God I did that, uh, because I had to, uh, to re-record this. My mic wasn't picking up, so, uh, moving on. Here we have Greg with his team, his very threatening team. Uh, pretty much everything that I expected. Um, there's nothing that I felt would come over these. Uh, so we got the, the dual psychic, the dual steel core, and he's got the Lando T plus the Zardex. So, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Very menacing team. We'll hop right into it. I won't make this a long one. So we're going to lead off here with uh, Yuxi against this Celebi. I'm going to go straight for Roxy. He's going to go into a Scizor. As I said, I sped crept this, so I'm going to go for the U-turn. And Greg is actually going to choose to uh, immediately 
go for the defog and get rid of the rocks and uh, he's going to switch out on my Silvali as I go for a parting shot he doesn't want to get flamethrowered I'm going to bring in my Aerodactyl and uh, once again I'm putting pressure on his team I'm going to go for the Stone Edge as his uh, his Lando comes in and I'm going to go for the Ice Fang on the following turn knowing that I can knock this thing out he's going to switch out into his Celebi take the Ice Fang just fine only takes 36% which is actually quite a bit for a Celebi and I was at minus one and I'm not offensive so there is that now I'm going to go back into Uxie on his rocks. I'm going to get up my own rocks. And I do see that his stack is a balloon. So I'm glad I didn't run Earthquake. Going to go for a foul play. I'm going to get a crit. Do some decent damage. He's going to go for Trick Room. And then he's going to go for Zen Headbutt. And he gets a flinch. That doesn't really matter. But let me tell you something, guys. The second I saw Zen Headbutt, I should have started questioning my prep. Immediately. And I should have looked, looked at some things. Because you guys are going to notice that my prep was completely based on this one idea that I had. Of, of how the game would play out that was completely wrong uh, and that I had no idea. My knowledge uh, on this game should be a lot more than this, but uh, anyway, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, he's going to go for a gyro ball now as I go for a U-turn, so I'm going to get off a little bit of extra chip on this. going to bring in Silvali uh, as he's going to go for another gyro ball. He does a lot to me, uh, and I go for a flamethrower. Now, here's another big problem uh, with how I played. I'm essentially going to sack off my, uh, my Silvali. Uh, right here uh, to get rid of the stack attacker because it's too much of a big threat and I didn't want a parting shot out into Coco because then I wouldn't leave this thing weakened enough for arrow later on in the game uh, so I wanted to make sure that I uh, I killed this thing off and as a result I'm gonna sack off my Silvali and uh, he's gonna go for another gyro ball gonna go for a flamethrower the trick room goes down he's burned which means that he can't come back in on rocks on a switch so I'm good to go I'm just gonna flamethrower and he's actually gonna bring in his uh, his scissor here to revenge me with bullet punch and uh, I was kind of surprised to see uh, Silvali go down there. I guess he was really, really offensive. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into Como, and uh, he's going to switch out as I get up on a, a, an Autotomize here. And the uh, the Ice Fang damage from earlier is actually going to come in clutch because uh, the Clanging Scales just so happens to be a min roll of 51 on this thing. So I'm going to end up knocking out the uh, Celebi. He's going to go into his Gardevoir Trace Bulletproof. That doesn't matter. Going to go for a Poison Jab get the poison as he goes down to it uh, as he gets up a trick room so this is really unfortunate for greg he was going to memento uh the turn after and uh, that would have been pretty big for him uh being able to to get a lot of initiative on me as uh he's now going to go into lando i'm going to switch out right so his trick room has four turns i'm going to switch out i'm going to go into you i'm going to sack it off to his sky strike which he does go for right here and i'm going to bring back in como now that the, the uh now that the trick room is up and I don't have an Autotomize, I'm going to go for a Clanging Scales. And once again, I don't get a defense drop here. So as a result, he can't immediately revenge me with anything. Uh, and he's going to go into his Scizor. And now this is where my knowledge on this game comes into play. You guys saw me sack off Silvali Steel earlier. Right here, I'm under the impression that no matter what I do, unless I miss a Focus Blast, I win. There's no way that I can lose this game if I don't miss a fo Focus Blast in my head. So I'm going to switch out. I'm going to go into Coco. He's going to get up an SD, and I'm still thinking this doesn't matter. He's going to go for Bullet Punch. I'm going to bring back in Como, which I switched out specifically because I believed that Bulletproof blocks Bullet Punch. And that's wrong. <laughs> it does not. <laughs> you know what it is immune to, though? Gyro Ball. And when I saw Staka go for her Zen Headbutt, I should have immediately realized that. That he was uh, carrying the Zen Headbutt for not only Amoongus, but also Como, because he can't hit it with Stone Edge or Gyro Ball. And had I looked that up, I would have seen that Scizor uh, couldn't, uh, it could still hit my Como, and I would have played completely differently uh, for this endgame. I would have ended up, um, I, would have, I would have ended up not switching out on the Scizor. Uh, when it came in, because whether, whether he bullet punched me, and I would have taken the L on that one because uh, my defense should have been lowered and he would have knocked me out. Uh, whether he bullet punched me or whether he swords dance, if I went for focus blast, I was safe either way as long as I hit. Because arrow could always come in on this thing and it doesn't die to, uh, to bullet punch uh, from where it was at. After rocks, it doesn't die. It was at full. So... I could have knocked this thing out with a Fire Fang and then just Stone Edge the Zard and I would have been fine. But because I was under the impression that Bulletproof protected against Bullet Punch, I ended up losing this game. 2-0 to Gregulator60. Um, I've choked against him in GBAD League. Now I choked my prep against him. 
I don't know when I'm going to beat Greg. <laughs> Maybe one day. Uh, when I decide to actually prep and play correctly against this man. But I don't know what it is. He gets in your head. Um, I was sure that I had this game. And then it came down to uh, to that. So very annoying, obviously. But uh, it's only a 2-0 loss. It's not too bad. Uh, we do go down to a uh, plus 3 differential with a 2-1 record. In the, in the NPL, I'm not too worried about that. Everybody else's game should already be uploaded. If you haven't checked them out, definitely go and do so in the description down below. All the coaches are there, uh, so you guys can go and check them out. Uh, but either way, uh, I have one of the better records uh, in, the, uh, in the league. I believe only Rob is 3-0 at this point. I could be wrong. Maybe Danza as well. I feel like Danza lost a game. Uh, but uh, I'm pretty sure that there are there's only one team with a better record than two and one. So uh, that's that's really good. I, I'm not I'm not ashamed of having a two and one record. Uh, I think that we've prepped decently. Other than this week, uh, I think that we've prepped and played decently uh, for the whole season so far. So hopefully that continues. If you guys do want to go and check out Greg's side though uh, and see uh, how he felt about me switching out Como, then uh, definitely go and do so. His link will be the first one up at the top in the description down below. And uh, go and show him some love, guys. Greg is, a, is a, an awesome content creator. I love Greg. Love being in call with him, just like with David. We're always uh, us NPL people. This is why I love the NPL is that, is that we're really, uh, I feel like we're really a family. Uh, and almost all of us get along, so that's uh, and that's what we really try to accomplish is to make sure that everybody gets along. Uh, this league is fantastic, so uh, I do encourage anybody that wants to apply for minors, apply for to be an analyst in the NPL to do so. Uh, anybody that hasn't done so already, uh, and even if you have done it already, do it again <laughs> if you uh, uh, if you if you're really adamant about being uh, being in this league in one way or another. Uh, but yeah, that's going to wrap it up, guys. There goes my uh, my little rant. Uh, if you guys did enjoy, of course, as always, make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Go and check out all the links in the description, and I'll catch you guys later. Ciao.